So we got a little bit of a different scene from what's typical here at Howie Equipment. I'm in a Briggs & Stratton Vanguard trailer that they've got decked out with all these different engines. What's well, really cool, I want to take the opportunity to grab my mechanic, Jason, you guys see him in some of these videos, and talk about how does a lawnmower engine work? Because there's so much under the hood of this engine that is exposed to this point that I think can give you guys a much greater understanding, you know, if you're going to work on something or do anything, you know, different of that nature. So I admittedly, have started to get into this industry probably about six years ago, right? I was a high school math teacher. I played sports growing up. I wasn't like backyard mechanic, but you, Jason, your whole life has kind of been tinkering on motorcycles at this point, and then now you are like our, our guru in the back on these engines. So I wanted to use you to just explain how each of these components work within an engine. And I'm gonna start some of it, but then it's gonna get way over my head, and that's why, that's why you're here, right? So you turn that key, You've got an electric current coming down eventually to the point where you reach the starter, which on the back of a lawnmower engine and is tucked back in this component. This is a starter solenoid. Basically power comes to uh, a starter solenoid. Starter solenoid is like a switch, it's like a light switch. And when it's got enough current, then it allows you to actually pass through that power. And what happens is then it gives power to the starter. And if we go from the inside of this, you got to tuck and look way back in here. And the, the gear on the starter will jump up and it will attach right here to the flywheel and it's gonna start spinning your engine. And this is where we start to go inside of the engine where I want you to take over, right? So the starter jumps up, it spins the flywheel, then what happens next and how do we get this continual spin, right? Because the continual spin is gonna be a pulley on the bottom of the engine, which eventually is gonna to translate to those lawnmower blades spinning. We gotta keep that spinning motion happening after that initial starter jump to get it all going. So after that point in time, this starts spinning, take us away. What happens next on the inside of this engine as we start to dive into some of these components, Jason? So essentially what's going on is when you see this turn over, you can see there's a, there's a crankshaft right here that goes through the entire engine that connects your clutch, your pulleys on the bottom, your drive pulley, your flywheel up top, everything connects to that crankshaft and you've got connecting rods. These two aluminum rods right here that, that connect to your pistons which are on top of the, the connecting rods and what happens is when this engine is turning over that piston goes up and down and you've got valves up top so on this particular engine this is an EFI your air and your fuel are coming in through this intake horn right here into the head and you can see when you turn this watch this intake valve right here you can see that intake valve starts to open as the pistons going down and what that allows is as the pistons coming down it's pulling that that gas and air mixture in through that intake valve and as the engine continues to rotate that valve starts to close you see it's it's completely closed now. Now the piston is coming up. This is what's called your compression stroke. So this is where this is where the magic happens. As that piston approaches the top, as soon as you get to top dead center, right now it's compressing that, that gas and air mixture. And once it gets to, to the top called TDC or top dead center, your spark plug ignites a spark, which is sent from this pickup coil from the flywheel spinning and it sparks at the end of that spark plug and ignites that gas and air mixture which then drives the piston back down and then as it comes up again you see your exhaust valve this bottom one right here opens up as the pistons coming up which then the piston forces all of that air that that burnt fuel and everything out of the exhaust and then the the cycle just repeats so so for me to jump in here jay ray starters popping up it's spinning this this is like a magnet, is that correct? That is creating an electrical pulse, yep. which is happening at this moment right here. That electrical pulse is going through here. So the power is supplied essentially from this magnet, right? Yep. And this all has to do with timing because it has to happen at the moment of this coming to top dead center. Yep. You're saying again you have your this is this would be your intake stroke when your when your intake valve is opening and then you have your compression stroke this is when the it's firing this is when it's creating that power 
and then you have your exhaust stroke and that's when the piston is pushing everything back out during the during the exhaust stroke essentially nothing is really happening on this cylinder and that's when your other cylinder over here is doing its job so that's when you get this simultaneous you know bang bang the, the engines running smooth when you have a cylinder that that uh, you have a loose valve or it might have dropped a valve or something like that or you have some issues on another cylinder your engine doesn't doesn't perform the way it's supposed to just because you don't have both of those working together and what is causing this to go that direction how is this getting compressed down what's happening so for that to work so if you look in there you can see a camshaft I can't really it's right back there there's a camshaft on there that's connected to the crankshaft by that that gear right there this here's your oil pump so that's supplying oil to everything and that gear turns your oil pump and your camshaft which then the camshaft as it's spinning you have those little they're like egg-shaped lobes and what those egg-shaped lobes do is when this engine is spinning it pushes a push rod up to right here which is called your this is your rocker this is your valve cover and your rocker and when that push rod gets pushed up from the the camshaft that's what causes your valves to operate whether it's open or closed so you know if your camshaft gets worn or something like that it can it can cause those valves to not open and close when they're supposed to which can cause some some running issues <laughs> okay so to recap some of this right we got fuel dumping in here tons of space that's coming uh, this is continuing to kind of kick and spin from the other explosion that's happened on the other side or initially obviously it was the starter and it's just all that fuel being compressed into such a tight area mixed with that spark that creates boom big explosion again that will pump it back the other way and it's that continual you know nature that creates this constant spinning motion and so there's a lot more complexity you know but even just to look at some of the components that are in here uh, if we look right in here, Jason, what's going on? This is a stator, correct? And explain how a stator is getting its power and then what that does uh, for your mower. So basically this piece right here that you see, they have actually got this cut on both sides. So this is normally one whole round piece. It's a big heavy flywheel. So this stator right here, you can't see that unless you pull everything, pull your flywheel and everything. And what this does is as this flywheel is spinning around it, it's generating a magnetic pulse basically. And what will happen is this will actually send that, that would be considered AC current. And your AC current would come out of these two yellow wires right here and go directly into a voltage regulator which then that voltage regulator converts it to DC current, which then comes through this red wire and straight into your wire harness or maybe even sometimes straight to your battery. And that's how it kind of charges the battery. So this flywheel, not only is it allowing the starter to turn the engine over to make the initial start, it's also these little tabs right here going past this, what is called a pickup coil is allowing this engine to, to the computer to know where that engine's at all the time so it can run correctly. But it's also generating power to keep your battery charged for the next startup. So to recap some of that, right, you've got the initial starter turned on this. We talked about how that's kind of supplying uh, power back to the battery to recharge that element. And then of course, fuel, he talked about. You got an air piece here and you got a fuel piece this is the fuel pump on your engine so all your v-twin motors should have this is a pneumatic fuel pump and this is run off of air pressure from your engine as your engine's turning over there's air pressure in this tube here which operates this fuel pump and draws fuel and pumps it to and from if it's a carbureted model um, this is the only fuel pump you'll have. On this one, it's an EFI model, so it requires a, a bit more fuel pressure to run properly. So they've actually got this fuel pump, which draws the fuel from the tank, and then this fuel pump, which pressurizes it to the, the spec that it needs to run. So with this one, it's a little bit different being an EFI. This is going to supply fuel to your injectors up top, which then spray at, this is all timed by a computer, this will spray fuel into this intake horn, whereas like a carbureted will uh, pull fuel through a, through a jet, a main jet in the carburetor. So 
This one relies on a lot more voltage to operate properly. So that's why, and you also see on here this, this ignition coil. Carbureted models, the ignition coil actually mounts right here where the pickup coil is. And that's because it doesn't need all that voltage. It doesn't need, it, and this is telling the ECU or the computer where that engine's at and when to inject fuel and everything else. That's why these are way more uh, fuel efficient. Um, but yeah, so on a carbureted model, your ignition coil being bolted here is doing away with pretty much all of that. You know, one really critical piece is you're trying to maintain uh, your engine is of course the proper lubrication of oil. And you mentioned down here, oil pump, which is distributing oil throughout. You have to have that lubrication. So we talked about air. You gotta have good, clean air that's creating a mixture in here to get the proper combustion. And, um, you know, part of that longevity of that engine that we see in our shop, you know, that, that's kind of common people are missing out on is keeping your lawnmower engine cool. If you look at getting really sludgy, heavy oil, oil that's not lubricating the way it's supposed to, a lot of the time it can be from overheating. So that's where you've got a head here that is cut away right now, but there are fins and the oil lubricates through this, correct? Underneath this piece. And it's actually right here, because it's kind of cut away. We're only seeing part of a fan, but this is spinning. These fins are creating a lot of air down this way, and it's critical to keep this cool enough, incredibly hot temperature. So what exactly is happening, you know, with the fins? Yeah, so your, your oil is gonna do most of your lubricating. It's getting pumped to the, the head up here to lubricate your valves. Uh, it's also seeping past these rings just a little bit to lubricate the rings that it needs to. A very, very important piece of all mower engines is this fan is sucking air through this top piece here, and it's blowing it across these fins and on, on some of these other engines, like, like this one here, you'll see these aluminum, aluminum shrouds on the, on the sides covering those cylinders. Those are there for a specific reason. It's to, to keep that air flowing past the engine itself. Uh, without that, your engine would overheat pretty bad. So with these fins, what they do is they dissipate heat so that when the air gets sucked through from the top and blows across them, that, that's what cools them down. So I know for me, when I was brand new to this, and like I said, it was only five, six years ago, I own an equipment dealership and a repair shop, all that sort of stuff, and it's still a lot that's above me. But I know for me, when I was first starting, there's just so much to me that felt forward about how this engine works. And if you wanna work on this machine, even if it's something towards the exterior, it really helps to know what's going on, you know, beneath the surface. So that's really cool, you know, we get to see that. And again, like a big shout out to Vanguard coming out, giving us a tutorial on that Vanguard system. So check that video out if you have not seen that yet. But hope this helps you. Doesn't matter if you got a Vanguard, a lot of these engines, they're working just like this. Talked about some of that difference between fuel injection or whether it's carbureted, but hopefully that gives you guys a much better understanding. Not because of me, because of this guy, Jason, uh, giving you guys what's going on inside your lawnmower.